वेलकम बैक टू कोड ग्रेड एवरी वन सो लास्ट वीक वन ऑफ द प्रो मेम्बर्स शेड दिस सुपर कूल वेबसाइट दैट रियली स्टूड आउट इट हैज़ बिन फीचर्ड ऑन गॉडली एज वेल आई वॉज रियली इम्प्रेस्ड विथ हाउ देर लैंडिंग पेज लुक दी फर्स्ट टाइम आई सॉ इट सो यस्टरडे आई स्पेंड अ फ्यू आवर्स ट्राइंग टू मेक समथिंग सिमिलर इट टुक मी अबाउट फोर टू फाइव आवर्स टू गेट दर यूजिंग जी सेप एंड जावा स्क्रिप्ट एंड हियर आर द रिजल्ट making stuff like this takes a lot of time and efforts for me so if you like my work please leave a like on the video and might subscribe as well if you haven't already just a reminder that if you want to access the source code it's available for the pro members so make sure you check out the link in the description now let's get straight to code without any more waiting off by setting up a container first up we will put together a nav bar inside it it's going to have three main elements a menu button a logo and some additional text next we are throwing in a footer just to make sure our page doesn't look empty next we will add a div dedicated to list of the items inside this div we will place our individual items each with its own bit of text for now we will have 10 items listed out lastly we will wrap things up with another div meant for the background image for the time being we will set default image as our background and that's the groundwork we will be adding more elements with javascript as we go along now let's move on to the styling as usual let's start by zeroing out the margins and paddings of each element and setting box sizing to border box on the body we will only need to set the fonts for the images we need to set its width and height to 100% and set object fit to cover just to make sure it takes entire space of its parent while maintaining original aspect ratio the container will have fixed position taking full viewport width and height we will give it a black background and set overflow hidden to avoid any unnecessary scrolling next i'll add styles for the navigation bar and the footer to keep things concise and save time we will only focus on the main topic so i'll skip the detailed explanation for this part next the items list will have also a fixed position taking 30% of the width and full viewport height we will add some padding and display it as flex with flex direction of column we will center it vertically with justify content center it will have the highest z index just so it stays on the top of other elements always now i will define some generic styles for individual items and the text inside it For the preview container we will set its position to fixed with full viewport height and width and also set the z index to 0 so it falls behind the items the preview background will also take full width and height of its parent and have a lower opacity just so the images inside it look darker and make the text on top of it more readable Now we will define some common styles for the text we will be adding in each slide later with javascript like the font sizes color and line height Now let's get to the most crucial part if you watch the demo closely you will know we are working with three different layout variations for the slides 
So now we will set up the positions for each element according to the variations. Later using JavaScript we will apply these three variations across all items in order. This means the first item will use variation 1 and the second item will use variation 2 and so on. Additionally, we will assign a unique initial clip mask value to each variation. This is because we want to rebuild the images in different directions for each one. Feel free to pause the video and take your time following along. Remember that the positions aren't set in stone. Feel free to tweak them to see what works best with the animations. And that's pretty much it. Let's bring everything to life with JavaScript. To streamline our project, I have organized our data into a separate script file, keeping our logic and content distinct. Here I have an array to map the items to specific layout variants and another array of objects detailing the content for each slide. Now let's dive into the main implementation. First, we will import our layout mapping and slide content to use in our script. When the document is fully loaded, we start by selecting our main container, the background area for the previews and all item elements. We also set up a variable to track whether the mouse is over an item or not. Next, we set up the default clip paths for each variant. Although we have already defined this in our CSS, we will need them to reset the slides back to their original state. We will also specify the starting positions for each variant, determining how the elements of each slide will animate into the view. Next, we will develop a utility function called get default clip path. This function will retrieve the default clip path for a slide, allowing it to revert to its initial state once we move the mouse pointer away from its corresponding item. Moving further, we will also need a function that assigns transformation styles to the title, tags and description of each slide based on its variant. The apply variant styles function identifies the variant by parsing the class name and applies predefined gcep transformations to animate elements into view or hide them depending on the user interaction. In the change background function, we create a new image element and set its source to match the image of the hovered item. We style it to overlay the existing default slide image using gcep. We animate the new image to fade in while the old one fades out, ensuring a smooth transition between images upon hover. Next, we iterate through the previews data object. For each item, we create a new div element, setting its class to include both a specific preview and its variant class from the map classes. We then populate this div with the item's image, title, tags and description. After appending this new element to our container, we can apply variant styles to ensure each preview is styled according to its variant. Now for each item, we will add two event listeners for mouse enter and leave actions. On the mouse enter function, we set the flag to true and update the background image to the item specific image using change background function. We then find and activate the corresponding slide element for the hovered item. If there is a currently active slide different from the new one, we reset its image clip path and fade it out, applying the variant styles again. The new active slide is made visible immediately and we animate the title, tags and description elements again to smoothly transition in. Finally, we will animate the clip path of the image to make the reveal animation. Now for the mouse leave, we mark the flag as false and reapply the variant styles to the active slide. After a brief timeout, 
if the mouse hasn't re-entered on a new item, we revert the background to the default image. If there is an active slide, we fade it out and then fade in the default preview like the default slide, resetting its image clip path for a clear transition back to the starting state. And that's it. I know I went through the code pretty quickly to keep the video short but please don't hesitate to drop a comment if you have any questions. I believe if you review the code a few times it will start to make sense. So I hope you enjoyed the video. See you in the next one.